Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art. I'm here at my desk and I'm working on some swatches for my Distress products. I'm working relatively often with the Ranger Distress products and I thought, why not making some swatches that have everything in one thing? So my plan is to have this little box here. This comes by Tim Holtz um, and this has those cool little dividers here so that you can store such cards or other things in that. And this is really handy and I thought I would like to have something like this here on my desk um, to be able to find my colors easier, to be able to have an overview over my um, Distress products. And I want to have everything from the Distress line that I have in this little box. That's the plan. And when I say everything, I'm talking about the Distress Oxide inks, the normal inks, if I have them in the matching color. I'm talking about the Oxide sprays and the spray stains, the Distress paint, embossing glaze, embossing powder, and the refillers for the ink pads. So that's, uh, I would say, everything that is <laughs> existing in my stash. And I want to have all of those products on one swatch for each color. Hope that makes sense. Whew, this is like magic. <laughs> Editing Luisa here. <laughs> I've just cut my recorded video and I've realized that it is already really, really long, even if I have only finished the front part of each of my swatches here. So this is still empty. Of course, the plan is to fill this up as well, but I've just decided that I want to split this video into several parts. So uh, that means this is part one. And in this part, I would like to show you how I have made the front of each of my swatches with the background, this little circle, the butterfly stamp and some splatters and you will see me finishing these up in my next videos. Um, for this little thing here, I uh, took my or orientation from my oxide inks because these are my most used mediums. I love oxide inks. If you know my channel, you know that I'm working with them really, really often. So for the colors, I've started with the oxide inks and what I have done is the following thing. I have cut myself tons of these little file folders here. This is a die cut that comes from this set by Zizix and Tim Holtz. This is um, this little piece here. And of course, you can also, if you don't have this die cut, of course, you can also use some scissors, a paper trimmer or whatever you have and cut yourself such a card thingy. You could even take a greeting card basis or something like that. You know, those prepared, already folded greeting cards. Um, you could use those or you could just take um, the paper of your choice, your paper trimmer and trim that down to the size that you like. But what I like about this die cut is that it fits perfectly into this little container here, this little wooden thingy here. And that's for me just perfect. And it's so time saving for me um, to just take my die cut machine and cut that out. But of course, you can do that uh, like you want and, for example, cut that by yourself. Uh, what I like about this file folder thingy is that it has this little tab here so that I can take a little label and label all of these swatches here. And that's exactly what I have done. And these come from the Ranger homepage. Ranger has, this looks a little bit strange, I'm sorry, because I've cut out already um, all of the colors that I've needed. Ranger has really, really cool uh downloads where you can download those labels for example you can download um, an empty color chart for your distress products you have those little round thingies that you can put on top of the paints for example they fit exactly here on top of this uh, bottle 
They have also tiny things where you can take a punch and then put that to your refiller bottles. They have tons of those things and that is so handy and so cool. I really like that. And I think um, that's really, really cool to have that. Uh, so please visit the Ranger homepage to find this. This is called Distress Color Palette Labels. Um, and of course, when you print that with your printer, this uh, those colors here are not exactly the same like when you swatch them. Yeah, but that's normal. That's the same with the color on the ink pads. This can't be exactly the same color like if you take it and take a sponge or a brush and put that to your paper. That's, of course, a normal thing. But I really like to have the names here because otherwise uh, um, you would have to go to your computer and um, you ha would have to type everything by hand. So I have decided to use this to save a little time. Um, and I have cut out all of the colors that I have for my oxide inks. And then I have done the following thing. I have taken such a... Uh, file folder thingy i even don't know if that is the right na name you know this card here um so i would like to show you that with victorian velvet how i have done that then i have taken <clears throat> my little finger sponge i'm storing them in uh, such a little box here also really handy and then i have just distressed the edges of this whole card on the inside and the outside and the reason why I have done that is really simple. I mean, there are actually several reasons. I have done that because I wanted to have something where I can look to the top and I can see the colors. I mean, I know my oxide colors really, really well. So uh, tell me a color that I have and I would pick the right one, right one from here. Um, of course, that needs a little bit of experience. I'm... A, a little bit proud of that as well that I know my colors so well um, but I wanted to have something where I can see ah okay here for example I can take that out and I know this is chipped sapphire yeah or I can uh, think okay I want a yellow mm, wild honey perhaps then I can take it out and I have wild honey here so that I can see the colors here from the top and I also wanted to have my swatches a little bit artsy. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I can't take my um, my inks and my sprays and that stuff and just put them to uh, a tag or something like that. That's not me. That's not Luisa Heinzel. So I wanted to have this a little bit artsy. And at the same time, here, of course, when I do it like this, I can see how... Um, a distressed edge with this color would look like. I mean, if I have it here, I can see how would that look if it's blended in like this, um, like you can reach it with such a sponge. Um, so that is also, of course, a swatch for itself, even if it's um, also meant to find the color and to be artsy. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then <clears throat> in the next step, I have just taken this little thing and I have taken my sponge and I just went over this little area like this and now I have this can you see that that's really different to the distressing here because here now we have a solid color by rubbing over that with the sponge it's totally different than the distressing is this is a swatch as well or part of the swatch and at the same time, this um, labels my little tab here uh, with the color. Do you know what I mean? And I've just taken that the other way around. And I've done that here as well. Originally, uh, to be honest, that was an accident. <laughs> because for the other cards, I made a mistake. And I've um, put the ink to the wrong side. But then I saw, thought... Why not doing it exactly like this? Because now I have it on both sides. So it doesn't matter how um, in which direction I have the card in my hand. And in the next step, I want to glue the label from Ranger here. So this Victorian velvet label now goes here. And of course, this covers up a lot of this inked area. So it's really cool to have that on the back side as well. So 
the next thing that I've done was I've just glued this little label here to be able to read that. Now we have this here. Just cut off this tiny edge here. How it go off? And then it looks like this. And this is some kind of a base for my swatches. So I will do that for the colors that uh, are still missing here in my collection. And then um, I will show you the next steps. There was one question that came from Sabine. Sabine is one of my German viewers. And she has seen in my other videos that I have also swatched my ink pads itself on the ink pad. So um, for every ink pad that I have, I have this little swatch thingies here on the, the case of this thing. Um, and she wanted to know how I have made that. So I've decided that I wanted to give this information in this English video as well, of course, even if that was a German question. So perhaps you wanted to know that as well. And perhaps you want to uh, do this for your own ink pads. So I have just taken some labels that are those labels that are coming on this bigger sheets, you know, and then I have just cut them down to the right size. On the left side, there's the pure ink. I've just applied that with a little sponge and um, the same on the right. But here I have added a little bit of water so that I can see the reaction with water, especially for the oxide ink pads. But this thing here, for me, is just an orientation what color I want to use. <clears throat> so, as I said, I know my colors really well. So, when I see this, I know that it is chipped sapphire. I don't um, need the name here on the, the ink pad itself. And that's, um, for me, really helpful, especially when I record my videos. So perhaps if you have a channel by yourself and you want to know how I am doing that, and uh, perhaps it's handy for you as well, and you want to make it for yourself as well, I just want to take you out of this um, phone holder here. So I'm recording with my phone, so please don't get sick. So that's what you can see approximately when I'm working here at my desk and when I now look into this direction then I can see all my ink pads here below my shelf and as you can see I can see those little swatches that I've made with the help of those labels at the first glance so for me this is really handy especially when I record a video because now I can say, okay, we need a, an orange or a yellowish orange or whatever. I can say, let's take wild honey and I can take it out and I know this is wild honey. I don't need to read the name. Um, I, uh, For me, this is really, really handy because uh, when I record videos, I have to... Um, I, I need this overview over all my colors because sometimes when I show you my process... Uh, then I have to think a lot while I'm explaining something. And um, this is a really, really handy way to have all my colors in front of me um, and to grab them really, really easily, especially when I'm recording videos. But these tiny things are just for orientation for the color. I mean, um, if I use a color and I um, want to explain something to you, of course, I would like to give you the information which color I'm using. And when I look there and I think, okay, seedless preserves, I take it out and I know this is seedless preserves. I can uh, show that to you without much thinking or something like that. I just know from this little thingy here that this is seedless preserves. And that's the reason why I'm doing this, uh, yeah, like it is here. It would be totally confusing for me if all of the names would be written there. Because, um, yeah, <laughs> reading the name for me is uh, much more effort than looking at the color and knowing which color it is. But of course, you can just do it like you want it. But uh, I just wanted to show you how I do that. And perhaps it's a trick for you if you have a channel and you need some orientation, then you could do it like this. Um, but um, yeah, when I when I only had the Distress Oxide inks, I mean, I've started with 
all of the ox not all but with with many of the oxide inks um for me they are the greatest medium in this world um and uh, i thought okay this is enough for me but then i realized that i also like the sprays that i also like not only the oxide sprays but also the spray stains <clears throat> that are coming in those little bottles here and then I realized, okay, this is great. Uh, embossing powder and glaze is great. <laughs> the refillers for the ink pads are also great for some mixed media technique techniques and so on. And then I realized that that is not enough for me. And that's the reason why I want to make some bigger swatches in this box here. And yeah, that's the reason for this video, actually. <laughs> The next thing that I would like to do is I would like to create a background here to the first, yeah, let's say page <laughs> of this little swatch thingy here. And I would like to do that exactly in the way I would do that on a journal journaling card or on a junk journal tag or something like that as well. So I'm taking my acrylic block and I'm taking my color, uh, Freight Burlap this time. And I am putting some of the ink here to my acrylic block like I would do it if I would do a normal project as well. Um, then I'm spritzing some water. And I'm just taking this little thing and I'm dipping that into the color exactly the way like I would do it if this was a tag or a journaling card or something like that. If I, when I have my first layer, I'm going to dry this. And this way, I'm building up a background with a technique that I'm using for my projects as well. That means I'm choosing my, yeah, let's say, favorite techniques for this swatch thingy. Um, if you think, now, I don't have any oxide inks or I don't have any Ranger products. Of course, you can also make yourself such a swatch with other mediums, with other brands, of course. That doesn't have to be Ranger or that doesn't have to be oxide ink or something like I'm showing here. What I'm trying to say is um, my wish is that I have here something that is a swatch a reference, uh, some kind of an orientation guide for my future projects that is made with my favorite medium and with my favorite technique. Do you know what I mean? So you can translate this idea to any medium that you have at home and that you are using for your junk journal projects, of course, or other art projects. You can do that with acrylic paint, with watercolor, with brushes, with whatever you have. So I'm drying this again. And as you can see, the more layers I get, the more interesting my background looks and the more different to the first impression it uh, it's beginning to look. Here you can see the uh, oxide effect of this uh, Freight Burlap ink. And of course, the more layers I put here, the more I get of that. And um, that is really helpful because especially Freight Burlap has so many different shades of the color in it that is really helpful for me to have something like this on my swatch and that's also of course a great way to practice this technique i mean yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean okay so that looks fine and since this is an oxide ink, of course, we can also use some water and spritz that here and there to get this cool effect a little bit more, if that is possible. I mean, look at this. This is just gorgeous. Um, and I'm taking a paper towel. Just dip a little bit of this off. And you can see on this paper... Um, I can lift off very much of the ink here. It gets nearly, you know, this light oxide effect. Um, it's not completely white where the water was, but, uh, you know, um, that is a really cool effect as well. So I'm going to dry this again. 
And then I will do the thing with the acrylic block and ink to the acrylic block and then water and then this for um, every color that I have so that I later on have every of my colors here in this thing with this method or this technique on this front page here. To be honest, this first step of making all of these backgrounds here is really, really time consuming, but I think it's totally worth it. And I'm saying that because of different reasons. I have spent a whole evening to make all of these backgrounds with my oxide inks. And um, the thing that makes it time consuming is of course only the drying time. So the, these backgrounds are now made with one and the same technique. I've put the ink to my acrylic block. Then I have taken this thing, dipped it into the ink, dried it, dipped it in again, dried it again, dipped it in again, and, and so on. So what makes it time consuming is only the drying time with your heat gun in between. But I think I've learned a lot <laughs> with doing this. I have told you that I know the colors of my oxide ink pads really well. So show me one of these things without showing me the name and I can tell you which color it is. I am totally sure about every color that I have, but <laughs> there are also some colors that really have surprised me. For example, brushed corduroy could be such a color. Um, if you are a beginner, you could think, hey, that is not only one color. Uh, I would like to explain that really quickly to all of you who are new to Distress Oxide inks, why this looks so different. I mean, if you, for example, look at Vintage Photo, then you could think, okay, this is one color. It's not so very different in the different areas on the card. But if you look at Brushed Corduroy, you could think, hey, that are different colors because we have this bluish gray here we have this brownish grayish brown <laughs> then we have this yellowish brown of the brushed corduroy itself and you could think these are different colors but this is made with one and the same ink pad with the brushed corduroy oxide ink pad and this that you can see different colors or you think you see different colors that only comes because of this technique um, putting the ink to the acrylic block, spritzing water, activating this oxide effect, and then dipping, drying, dipping, drying, and so on. That means you can reach this cool effect with only one ink pad and with one and the same color. And that, of course, makes it really interesting for backgrounds, for journaling cards or junk journal text or whatever, or whole pages, or you could even dye your papers um, with this technique. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to stay in my order here, otherwise I have to um, reorganize that in the end. Um, so um, with, with some colors, it's not so extremely. For example, Rusty Hinge is not so extremely. Uh, with this effect but for example look at wild honey look at this this is just gorgeous for a background and when I made these I thought okay I know my colors I know what I have in my stash but some of these really surprised me because I think in our let's say um, daily junk journal life we often I guess don't get the whole effect from our mediums. Um, I think sometimes we use our mediums without mm, a lot of thinking. I mean, that's good, yeah, to don't overthink anything. But uh, sometimes I guess it's worth it to think a little bit about it and to know what we have and what those mediums that we have can do. For example, Antique Linen. That is a color that surprised me really much and also Bundled Sage. Um, I have told you about those little swatches that I have put to my ink pads. And again, this is the, the oxide ink 
put with a sponge to the label. This is the same thing, but spritzed with a little bit of water. And here you can see that it has this oxide effect, but you can see, I would say, two or three shades of this color. If I now put this here and compare that, can you see that antique linen now has shades of gray and blue and a really cool beige here as well? It's not only the color that I have on my tiny swatch on my ink pad, but this, with this technique, I would say, gave me the real impression of antique linen. It's not only this. I mean, do you know what I mean? It's like a hidden secret in this ink pad that you can bring out with this technique. The same thing I experienced with Wandered Sage, <clears throat> or a similar thing. Here on the swatch on my ink pad, you can see on the right side of the swatch a little bit of gray, a tiny little bit, and also a really uh, lemonish green, do you know, like, like a lemon is. But when you look closer here, you can see this effect really, really well. I think my camera can't, can't touch that, uh, catch that, but here it's the color of a lemon around this little tiny thingy here. And there are several several areas where I can see a nearly neon lemon color mixed with the original bundled sage color. And here where the water, uh, where I've spritzed the water, that's this grayish and really cozy uh, kind of green. Do you know what I mean? And that's for me really impressive. Um, when I made this, I was like, oh my goodness, Am I really sure that I know my colors? I mean, you can, of course, uh, compare all of those in one step. When you do these uh, swatches here, you can see, okay, I'm coming from, for example, forest moss to crushed olive. I can compare that directly because those greens are next to each other in my palette there of the ink pads. And then you can compare that you can see what happens here. I mean, look at this, crushed olive. That's thousands of colors, I would say, if you look closer. This year, this crazy green here, yellowish green, is from the first layer. This gray and the darker tones of the crushed olive uh, are coming with more layers. And then you get the real crushed olive color. Do you know what I mean? I mean, this is, that is really, really crazy. And what you also can uh, find out is how the different uh, ink pads are reacting. Um, Tim Holtz is explaining that in his videos really uh, intensively that not all of the ink pads have the same uh, like ingredients. That's not the right word. I can't explain that so good in English. Sorry, but... Can you please compare this? You can see that um, different colors have different things in it, in the ink pad, that make different effects. This Lucky Clover is way more intensive than Cracked Pistachio here is. And that's uh, because of two reasons, I would uh, say. The one reason is uh, what I've said before, that not every ink pad has the same things in it. And... Here, it's also because my Lucky Clover ink pad is way more juicy than my Cracked Pistachio ink pad. That means the more ink, of course, you have on your acrylic block, the more intensive your result gets. The less um, ink you have on your acrylic block, you know, the less intensive is that a sentence i really don't know <laughs> your result gets so um that's also something uh when you make all of those swatches i mean i had several hours of making these and i could compare each after each other when i had this i was like oh okay this is correct pistachio lucky clover oh why is this so dark i had the chance to think about that immediately while i have done it 
Do you know what I mean? And normally with normal projects, when you are in your flow of making a project and not a swatch, then you don't have this chance, I think. You think about so many different things where i want i put where do i want to put my focal point uh, which color do i want to use today uh, scraps glue other mediums whatever stenciling stamping you know everything that you're thinking about but these basics i guess are lost in that process and when you make this and you have it at hand and you can look at that and think about oh is that good you can put your focal point here and think, oh, that's perhaps a little bit too intensive. And I know I had much ink here, so I can use less ink to get a more, uh, you know, not so intensive result. Do you know what I mean? And that's that for me was really, really great to experience that. So uh, what I'm trying here, I mean... <laughs> I'm not working for Ranger, yeah? Everything that you can see here, I have bought with my own money. I get nothing from Ranger when I tell you this. This is my personal opinion and my personal, um, yeah, I can say passion about Ranger products and especially um, all of those products that are so uncontrollable, like the oxide inks. That's only my personal opinion about this, yeah? I'm I'm getting nothing from Ranger. Um, by the way, <laughs> I, I have to say that, by the way, thank you so much to everyone who has suggested that I contact Ranger with my stencil swatches. I have shown you a video a while ago where I've made swatches for my stencils with different um, texture pastes. And so many of you have said that it was very helpful and that I shall contact Ranger so that they can print my swatches into a book. <laughs> and that was so great for me. Um, I haven't done that um, until now, but uh, I'm really thinking about it because also the video was really, really popular. Um, and I want to thank every one of you who has left a comment and watched the video and you were so thrilled about that. So I'm hoping that you are thrilled about this as well and that it, that this is helpful for you as well. I mean, uh, when it's helpful for me, that doesn't mean it's helpful for you as well. Do you know what I mean? I'm sitting here and I'm uh, really excited about this and I'm so hoping that you get this and that you think, okay, I want to make this for myself as well because this is just crazy and so helpful. And this is only the first step that we've done. Yeah, so of course, this is not finished yet. So we will go on with the next step. In my next step, I would like to stamp a butterfly on top of each of those backgrounds but not only that I also want to put a little circle here um, to my background so I would like to try to imitate something that I would do in my real <laughs> junk journal life as well do you know what I mean this is a swatch this is some kind of a reference but I want to make it like I would do it on a regular project as well um, to get my butterfly stamped to the same place on each of my swatch swatches, I'm using my stamping platform here. So I'm putting this thing here down with my magnets. And I'm making sure that this is lined up with this uh, corner here, with these edges here, sorry, so that I press the paper into this little angle here so that um, even if it moves I can get it back to this position really easily later and by the way I found out a trick or oh, actually that's a really cool story <laughs> this trick came actually from my German teacher in school um, it doesn't matter but I have fallen in love with him <laughs> while I was in school and he had to uh, put those schedules to a pin board every morning and he did a really cool trick. I mean, I was there as a student and I have watched him. I mean, I, I was a little stalker, I have to say. <laughs> I wanted to see him and I was there and I watched <laughs> how he put how he has put the schedules to this pin board and he did a really cool trick and this is helpful here now so 
and you have something like this can you see that the paper is not totally flat that's of course because of the water that i have used before if you put now two magnets here press this thingy here into the corner <sighs> this bracelet drives me crazy um and then you press it to the corner and then you take this magnet but instead of putting it here and having a hill here you place it here like this and then without lifting it you put it here so that makes the pa paper way more flat in this area the second one or the, actually the fourth one goes here and then you put it like this he did that all the time every morning when i was in school i um yeah i saw that he has done that and this makes the paper really really flat and i'm really grateful for that by the way <laughs> so for my stamping, I would like to use this butterfly here. This is by Tim Holtz. This is a clear stamp. This is also available as a cling stamp in the Flutter collection of Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. Um, this is a little bit bigger. I'm really happy that I have that. And I can recommend to take a little bit bigger stamp. I will tell you in a second why. For stamping, I'm using my Stazon Jet Black ink because this is the black ink that I'm normally using for my projects as well. And I'm often also using butterflies for my stamping. So what I'm trying to say, to say is um, use what you normally would use on your actual projects as well. So if you are using cars for stamping, then use a car stamp now. If you are using brown ink to stamp all the time, then now please use brown ink. Use what you normally would use in your junk journals as well. So now I'm stamping this here to the background. And as you can see, this is not so clear in the inside here uh, in the inside of the um, stamp impression. That is not so great. But I'm only looking to the outside wings here of the butterfly. This is totally uh, fine for me for, for this first step because now <clears throat> I want to put a circle in the matching color to this uh, thing here. I have just made a circle out of the same paper that I have used here for my swatch and I've inked it with the same ink that I have here on my swatch. And now I want to place that here on top and then stamp again, approximately like this. And perhaps you're wondering why I have stamped before putting the circle here. I mean, you could also glue the circle on and then stamp. But what happens then is the following. Look at this. This is what I made before I started the video and I've tried out everything to be prepared for this video. So here I have used hickory smoke. The circle is also inked with hickory smoke and I've just glued it down and then I've stamped the butterfly. But because of the thickness of the paper, you can't get a really good impression here. Can you see this little white or grayish gap? Here you can see the background through and here as well the stamp impression is not complete here. That looks totally weird in my eyes. It's not nice. So I thought about a solution and this is my solution. First stamp the image to the background, then take the circle and glue that down to the position where you want to have it. And I'm trying to get this uh, to the same position on every swatch. And I'm also trying to get the glue to the very edge of my circle to be sure that it is glued down really well because I thought about something else that could become a problem. And I'm putting the glue to the very edge of this circle because this paper is relatively thick. And in a normal junk journal project, I mean on a page or something like that, I would probably put the glue only to the middle because that is totally enough to hold the circle down. Um, and get a little uh, natural drop shadow around the circle because it's not totally glued down until the very edge. But in this case, I want to use this little wooden box here. And of course, I want to be able to take my swatches and put them in and out here. And it could happen if this is not glued down totally that I want to put it in and, do you know? I have this problem 
And when this is not glued down totally, then this could be destroyed with the time. So I'm making sure that this is totally glued down. And then I'm taking my ink again. And because of the stamping platform, I can put another stamp impression on top of this and on the circle of course um into the same on the same uh, in the same position on in off mm, oh, those little words <laughs> you know what i mean so that this gets one whole image and that i get it to the circle as well so this is this was not so successful but that doesn't matter oh, tim why is this magnetic? Can you please tell me, Tim? Why is this magnetic? This is not handy <laughs> in combination with the stamping platform. I'm always um, lifting up the magnet with this bracelet. Ah. So <laughs> we want to have a clear stamp impression. So we are going to stamp this again. And I, now I'm pressing mainly in the middle of the butterfly to get that really black there. And now when I have this, I can, of course, uh, see different things on this little example here. I can see how my most used ink is coming out on this inked surface with the frayed burlap in this case. So I can see the contrast. I can also take another one and compare the contrast, for example, to know what, which ink I want to use, which color I want to use. But not only uh, that it can be compared to each other with the different colors, you can also see several things on this one piece here. Um, I have chosen this butterfly that is bigger than my circle for some reasons. With one stamp, and you have seen that can be uh, made really quickly. This is not such a time-consuming step. Um, but with this one stamp, I can see several different things. Um, the stamp is bigger than the circle because now I can compare the stamp impression on the inked surface with the frayed burlap just applied to my paper. And I also can see how it comes out if I would make such a background with the different shades of the frayed burlap color. That means here on those wings and also on tiny details like these little both things here from the wings, I can compare that. I can see, okay, on uh, this more wild background with the different shades of the color, it looks like this. I can see it here on the both parts of the wings. And on a um, surface that's inked in a more solid way, it would look like this. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So this gives me a really cool comparison to the different techniques that I can do with the ink. I have prepared uh, those circles for every of my colors that I have. And now I will do exactly the same steps for all of my swatches. So that means I will put the stamp to the background, then the circle, and then stamp again to each of my uh, swatches until I have this result for each of them. And then we can go on. When we have done all of that, we can, first of all, I think, celebrate this a little bit. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and be proud of ourselves that we have come to this stage of the project. And then when we have done that, um, of course, we can decide uh, for the next things that we would do in a normal project. So if these all were junk journal tags, for example, what would I do next? If you know my channel, you know that I really like to splatter some tiny splatters to my projects. That means I will now splatter white and black to each of my swatches. 
My favorite mediums to make black and white splatters are white gesso mixed with some water and black acrylic paint mixed with some water. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm adding some splatters. I will go with the white ones first to all of my swatches. And I'm also using exactly the same brush that I would use to make my splatters to my normal projects. That is this one here to get a mo um, yeah, the most closest look to the reality, I would say. I'm covering up, first of all, the first row there on the top with some paper approximately in the middle of those circles. So that I can get my splatters only to the top part of my swatches. When we have that, we can go on with the black splatters. Okay, so when all of this is finished, it looks like this. I'm totally happy with how this came out. And I'm also really happy with my splatters here because this also gives me really much information. Um, here they are not so big. They can be, uh, the, you can't see them so good in the camera. So let me um, take this here, walnut stain, as an example. As you can see, um, the white splatters here on the top, they turned out really different in the different areas. On the circle where really much ink is, I mean, I have taken a sponge and I have, not a sponge, uh, this is a brush, this brush, and I have just uh, put the ink on top of this circle. So there's relatively much ink on this round paper here, and that makes the white gesso mixed with water a little bit stained as well. And here I can see exactly how it will turn out. Here in the camera, it looks nearly white on the background, but it isn't. It's also a really light brown, um, of course, a shade of walnut stain. Um, that gives me really much information about um, how white splatters come out on different inked surfaces. If there's more ink, the splatters get stained more, of course than if I would put them to such a background like this one here with the different layers. The black splatters, of course, are black, <laughs> as you can see. Um, but this is also great because, um, especially here where they turned out a little bit bigger. If I would do this again, I would suggest to um, also put some bigger splatters to the swatches um, because you can see that better how it will turn out, even if your splatters on the real project later will be a little bit smaller, you can see it better on the swatch when they are a little bit bigger. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, black, of course, will stay black on the different surfaces, but it's also helpful to see the contrast of the black and the color that they are on. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. And I think my goal to make some swatches that are helpful but artsy as well is totally uh, fulfilled. <laughs> Dried marigold surprised me as well with those splatters. That looks a little bit strange, but it's good to know that in the camera it looks nearly white, doesn't it? Really strange. But in, rea in reality it is a really weird yellow. Um, and this also gives me information to not do it on a project. Do you know what I mean? I really don't like this, um, what I can see with my eye in reality. Um, and this gives me the information that I don't want to do it like this on a project. And, um, 
yeah so that's this in my next video of this little uh swatch series here uh i mean in the beginning i haven't expected that it gets a series but i need the time to do that and to explain that in detail because i also want to um have all of the beginners the possibility to understand what i'm doing here and why these swatches are helpful um so yeah <laughs> this is a series now <laughs> really unexpected but it is one um in the next videos of this series i will fill up the inside uh, because of course i have to use my spray stains or not have to use but i want to use my spray stains on the swatches as well and also my oxide uh ink sprays my distress paints and my embossing powders and glazes so i will show you how i will um do that and put that to those swatches here as well and perhaps you can also see the reason why i have taken this bigger kind of card thingy uh, in the meantime i also thought wouldn't it be great to have a whole little booklet for each color i mean if i have this now and i think okay i found out for example it's just one example for example, I found out a great technique with Villainous Potion. This, for example, is really, really like magic for me. I mean, look at that. That is just gorgeous. And perhaps I want to try something like this on an extra piece of paper. And I don't want to forget what I have done there. Then I could take this here. And even if this... And this is filled up with the other mediums. I could take some pages, put them in here, sew this whole thing together with a three hole pamphlet stitch, for example, and have some pages in here. And then I would have a whole villainous potion swatch booklet. Can you please tell me that this is genius? <laughs> I mean, perhaps. There were other people who have done that before I came to this idea, yeah. I'm sure that there are things out there that are already made with such an idea. But for me, this versatility, is that a word, <laughs> of this was just mind-blowing. When I sat here and I thought, okay, what happens if I have a special technique with one uh, color? I mean, sometimes um, things happen by accident do you know what i mean you have those happy accidents during your projects and then you think i want to document that somewhere then this is the perfect place because you can say okay forest moss my favorite color i will make a whole booklet out of this because i have some special techniques with forest moss you don't have to do that for all of the others i mean if you want that okay that's fine that's totally fine but you can uh this is so versatile that you can do that color by color. You don't have to do all at once. Do you know what I mean? That is totally great for me. And I hope that you are thrilled about that as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's it, I think, for now, from me. Um, in the next video, as I said, we will go on with the other mediums to put them to the swatches. And uh, I hope you like this. If you have any suggestions or any questions or whatever you want to say, then please leave a comment and let me know what you think about this. Give me some feedback. Perhaps you have some ideas that I could um, include into future swatches or something that you have done. If you have a YouTube channel and you have a cool video about swatching your distress products, then please leave a link. Feel free to put every link into the comment section so that we can inspire each other for our swatches. See you the next time. Stay creative and have a great day. See you!